지어 모두 다 빨리 박수 쳐 기다리지 말고 서둘러 이제 내란 밝혀서 to feed you rap so I see that you are bad so sad Steve, a uh, great conversation for us today. Uh, there is universal agreement that nepotism is good, and Bronny mm. James and LeBron James have done nothing wrong. The media is united on this front. I, I want to play you just a little potpourri of, I believe this is Stephen A. Smith, Draymond Green, <clears throat> Ryan Clark, and Stephen Jackson. All. This is SOT 9, 11, 12, and 13, all of them championing Bronny James being drafted at number 55, and this is just everything that's right with the world, and black privilege is the same as black power. Play the clip. Let me say something, <clears throat> and I'm going to get a little deep with this. Forgive me, and if it gets to a point where I get personal with it, so be it. It's on me. We live in a country where nepotism has taken place with white folks religiously forever. We've said little to nothing about it. In the NBA specifically, in a league where at least 70% of the players are black, we've seen nepotism with white folks all over the place. Ownership, executive ranks, player personnel, scouting, coaching. Mm -hmm. The list goes on and on. We've said little to nothing about it. And now this happens with LeBron James, a member of the Mount Rushmore of basketball. basketball. Because America, not everybody, not most, but a lot of people are about stay in your place, stay in your lane. And LeBron James has religiously been about the business of defining his own lane mm. and showing that I don't mm. have a lane. I got avenues. And I'm coming this way and you ain't going to do anything about it because I represent what I represent, how it's supposed to be represented on the highest level. And I've earned the right to be able to have this kind of power where I can manipulate proceedings to some degree. That is what we should be applauding LeBron James about, because he's highlighting not only what we can do, but what so many people in this world don't want us to do. Y'all know what Bronny went through a year ago. To go through that and make it back from that and be within the NBA within a year, like, is a testament to his drive and work ethic. And I actually think um, Bronny is going to end up being a better pro than a lot of these players in this draft because has the athleticism, has the basketball IQ, um, plays the game the right way. I think he's going to be a, a, a good shooter in the NBA. LeBron James, whether Bronny James earned it or not, LeBron James earned the right for his son to be drafted because a team wanted to make him happy and keep him on the team because he is that great. So for everybody that is saying this is nepotism, I want you to look up the definition because that's not it. This is greatness. And unfortunately, for all of you people who aren't great or who don't have the talent, or who haven't worked hard enough, or who've made excuses your whole entire damn life, you are not afforded the same thing that this man is, and you don't deserve it. He Black does. privilege, I'm all for it. Shout out Bron and Bronny. We've been saying so much, so much white privilege for so long. It's good to see some black privilege. I'm all for it. Bronny, sign, get your son drafted, Bron. Sign it to 200, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, George Carl did it. It's been done for a long time. But y'all want to complain about Braun getting putting his hands on it. Shout out Rich Paul and shout out Braun for doing it their way. So many of us wasn't able to do it our way for so long. Y'all got to salute the real ones that's doing it their way. You're supposed to make way for your son. Come on, man. I just don't get it. Some of y'all ain't talented anyway to be on this level. Shout out Bronny, Braun, and Rich Paul. Steve, hmm. uh, the black intelligentsia has spoken. The black elite have spoken. This is this is all great. Do you agree? Well, it's interesting. If that is the new standard, Jason, I think you pointed it out on Twitter last week. You, you're not against nepotism. You just want to benefit from it. So whatever insert blank privilege is afforded to anybody, look, let us just benefit from it. If that is the new standard, 
then I don't want to hear people complaining that Donald Trump was handed down his money. And you go back about, what, seven, eight years ago, Jace, remember that college admission scandal that involved like Lori Loughlin and people were up in arms over legacy admissions? Well, I guess we're not against that anymore. Long as we benefit from it, it's okay. But I want to focus two things on the last two speakers, the uh, esteemed Ryan Clark and the Honorable Stephen uh, Jackson. When Ryan Clark said some of those things, I, it's almost like, hey, Ryan, um, you weren't talking to a bunch of white people when you said that about all the complainers. The other thing about Stephen Jackson, he talks about creating basically black priv privilege, right? Okay, Stephen, you've made a lot of money because you are good enough to play in the NBA. You earned every dollar. And, I, and this message really goes for every athlete that has this train of thought. How much have you invested into your communities to actually create more black opportunities? Are, are you just going to complain about everyone that sets down businesses in your effective communities, but has never actually paid rent on one building, never brought one acre of land to, quote, unquote, create a black uh, business or a black uh, ecosystem of economy? It's really ironic that it, the, the, the things that they are saying, I don't think they understand exactly who they're ripping they're really not ripping all these people. Look, the bottom line is this with Bronny. It's not that big of a deal that he's going to be able to play basketball. It really is. And I'm not really that bothered by it as a former Laker fan. It, it is what it is. It's a second round draft choice. But when I see these false equivalencies drawing this to like Jerry Jones hiring all his children, let me remind you the difference. Jerry Jones owns that business. He is an owner. He is not an employee. In fact, he signs all the checks and he is empowering his kids to a point where only he and his family can make that decision over when we sell our stake in this and when we leave. Uh, Bronny is just another employee when it's all said and done. So even that, again, I think is a very flimsy uh, comparison that's being made. It's, it's a horrible comparison. And George Reitzer, who played, a couple, played in the NFL four or five years, played at Oregon, tight end, he 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 got he put out a tweet that's got 11, 12 million views where he played this Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, and Jerry's daughter, you know, have jobs with the Cowboys. And I'm like, hey, man, do y'all understand the difference between inheritance and nepotism? Like, you buy a house, you leave it to your kids. You buy the Cowboys, you leave it to your kids. If LeBron James wants to leave the uninterrupted media empire to his kid, if LeBron James wants to install Bronny as an agent at Clutch Sports, got it. He owns those businesses. The Masterpiece Lounge in Indianapolis was left to me and my brother. It, it, my dad built it. He owned it. He left it to me and my brother. Got it. This, he doesn't own the Lakers. He doesn't own the NBA. This is classic nepotism, someone getting an opportunity they don't deserve and denying someone else that opportunity. The, the hypocrisy is so thick here, it's embarrassing. Well, oh, go Jason, ahead. Jason, this whole thing is being hailed as black power, right? No, no, it's LeBron power. It's James power because that, that means one young black man is getting an opportunity. Think about the juxtaposition of this. He gets all the credit for giving his son a quote unquote undeserved roster space. Let's be honest, he's going to make the team, okay? Meanwhile, his name is on a school where nobody can read at a grade level. A whole generation of kids that, have, that do not have the genetic makeup, do not have the gene pool to get a job in professional sports. What are these going to kids do in about five to 10 years when they have to live and venture out into the real world? Is that really black power? The other thing is this. It would have been a much more powerful statement if they would have said, no, no, my son, Ronnie, as soon as he graduates USC, he's going to create businesses and I'm going to create LeBron James corporate entities for black empowerment. And I'm going to spend $500 million for black investment with black entrepreneurs, with black ownership and partnership, because we are going to strengthen the black economy for all of Americans. See, now, that to me is black empowerment. What's going on here really is just a really high profile vanity play.
it's certainly all about LeBron's ego. I give, this is another example of why I give the nod to Michael Jordan in all aspects as it relates to uh, LeBron James and this whole GOAT battle and discussion. Uh, Le LeBron James has, again, you can tell, not raised by a father, uh, doesn't, and I'm telling you, if he had given him a job at Uninterrupted, if he had given him a job at Clutch Sports, zero problem. Giving him a job in the NBA when the guy is clearly unqualified, this is classic nepotism. It undermines the game. And, and look, it, it's just like LeBron set the standard for super teams, he's now setting the example and the standard for what you do if you're a super talented player and have leverage over the team. Put your buddies on the team, on the roster. Hey, uh, Giannis, who's got his brother, and, and the Giannis thing I, I almost understand. Giannis is from Greece, he's not from America, he, he's, you know, you want to put someone on the team that helps Giannis socially, his brother, got it. To, to some degree, I, I get it, understand it. But your son, because you have some little wet fantasy about playing basketball with your son, it's narcissistic, selfish. <laughs> These guys are well, all such groupies for LeBron James. It's well, embarrassing. Well, Jason, Giannis's brother is basically his Jack Haley to his Dennis Rodman. And you're right, there's a cultural aspect. He was years ago a foreigner coming into a new land. You're going to need some familiar people around you. So I, I kind of get it. The other thing is, the reason why a lot of these guys are saying it, it's all about protecting their own status and access. I mean, I thought it was kind of funny that Rachel Nichols, who I believe has been very fair. She's a respected NBA observer. She's covered the league. She's been around it. I certainly don't look at her as anti-LeBron, okay? But it became a story that she had some, I guess, mild criticism or a critique of this that not only did she get unfollowed on social media, it became a story. And believe it or not, Jason, I'm going to a little secret to all the public. A lot of these big name media members or just any of them, they actually care that certain people of status in the league or the games they cover follow them. They really do. I think it's kind of juvenile and that's one of the downfalls or the pratfalls of social media that you start performing, as you would say, Jason, not for your audience, not your readership, but for the athletes you cover. And this is where the lines get muddled between the media and the athletes that they are in charge of actually just trying to give a fair word to. Steve, uh, thank you. Great job as always. Uh, that's it and that's all. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't miss a second of Fearless. Hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with our latest content.